Howdy champs! My name is Mohit and people today I'm going to talk about the animation property in CSS. In fact I would straight away like to start off with the browser preview in Google Chrome. There we are. So here we have a list of uh, some modern browsers, images of some modern browsers and they are in a vertical scroll. It goes from the top to the bottom and then reverses the direction and it's alternating. Uh, so basically it's a scroller, slider, uh, gallery, call it whatever pleases you, right? Uh, the viewport is actually the div that you're seeing the images through is actually 256 by 256, which also matches the size of uh, these different uh, browser icons, right? So at one given point of time, you can see uh, one icon properly, right? So basically, it's a vertical scroller, image scroller that is in an endless loop okay in the screencast that that is happening right now the um, the animation is a little jerky but you, when you actually test it on your uh, computers on your screens it's gonna be pretty smooth alright so let's see how this was actually done okay now I can actually redo the whole code all over again uh, but the code is so very simple I think it'll be sufficient if I uh, explain the code to you. I'm gonna give you the source code, right? I'm gonna give you the file away, the test animation.html file away and uh, which will have all the assets including the uh, different browser images as well as the HTML CSS code. So uh, I need not actually rewrite the whole code again because I personally feel it's very very simple to explain it uh, right from the document itself. Okay, now as always, I always like to uh, tell you what exactly is there inside the opening and the closing body tags before I actually take you through the CSS. So HTML first people. Now this is the uh, opening body tag. This is where the body tag closes. Okay. So inside the opening and the closing body tags, we have an opening and a closing div tag. And this only div this one single div has an idea of header. In fact, it could have been anything else. Right. Sandwiched in between the uh, div with an ID header, we have five images of the different browsers Chrome, Firefox, IE, uh, Opera, Safari. All of them have the same width 256 and the same height 256. And the same class slider. Right so they share the same class width and height all right so the html is so very simple to uh, understand nothing complex out there right now let's talk about whatever is inside the opening and the closing style tags in the head of the document so i've used internal or embed styles which is ideally not the best way to work but for this very small project it's okay right the type attribute is always set to text forward slash CSS. Now the first rule is for the body, the body tag and says uh, margin left 100 which is here and margin top 100 which is out here. So basically just creating some cushion on the top and on the left hand side. Either you can manually write it or you can quickly go out here modify page properties and say margin left 100 top 100. All right. Now, next what I've done is I've defined the rules for the only uh, div uh, header. Okay, so the hash header. So let's see how the div is actually controlled with the different properties. So the height has been set to a 256 and the width also 256. So basically the division that you see right now out here uh, is a perfect square. The overflow is hidden which means since we have five images uh, although images are inline elements people and will sit left and right adjacent but since uh, the division does not have enough width they fall down below each other and behave as block elements inside the only div that we have okay now when you force the overflow to be hidden it means that only at uh, one given point of time you will just see whatever is inside the div not whatever is outside so all the other four images although are inside the div they'll not be shown because the overflow has been uh, set to hidden the default is visible people in which case if I actually change it to visible what will happen that uh, you'll be able to see all the five images uh, 
even though they may overflow the uh, div. Right? Let's revert. Cool. So uh, let's talk about the CSS uh, further. Now I've also given my devour uh, the division a uh, one px of solid gray border. All right. Uh, now let's understand the class slider. Now this class slider has been attached to all the five uh, images people. All of them share the same class slider. Right. So this rule slider controls all the different images and let's see in what way. Okay. Since I'm testing my animation in WebKit browsers or a WebKit browser Chrome, I need to suffix or prefix rather the dash WebKit dash window prefix. The animation property uh, works in all the different browsers, but for the WebKit browsers, you need to prefix the dash WebKit dash window prefix. And since I'm testing it only in Chrome, uh, I'm just I'm using dash WebKit dash. This property is not supported in IE9 and earlier versions. All right. Now let's see the syntax for the animation property. People, I'm using the animation shorthand property. All right. I'm writing it in one single line, although you can separate as different properties too. But it's all almost always easier to use the uh, sh shorthand method or the shorthand property. Okay. The animation property first must specify the name and I've I've called it my animation but that's a personal preference you could have given it a dif different name too all right then I followed it up with the animation duration I would want my animation to happen over eight seconds all right you could have chosen a different value too and you can even specify it in terms of milliseconds cool now this value is the easing I've kept it as ease in out slow towards the beginning and the end and a little quicker somewhere in the middle of the animation. Uh, you could have had it as just ease or ease out or ease in uh, etc too. Right. Uh, I would want my animation to never cease to never end be an endless uh, animation that's why I've kept the value as uh, infinite although this iteration count, it's called the iteration count could have been 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 15, whatever other than infinite 2 right? now this is animation direction I've kept it as alternate which means from one end to the other and then from the other end back to the you know the uh, to the square one so on and so forth but uh, the other values are normal which is also the default uh, reverse, alternate reverse 2 all right, but in our example, the best suited alternative or the best suited option is alternate. All right, now this name, the animation name, is extremely important because I need to use this as the name where I actually describe how the animation is going to work. In fact, let me just scroll down. Okay, you see. I've defined my animation out here over the next few lines. So this is the uh, core of the animation that is happening. This is where you actually describe the animation. So notice that I've used the at the rate keyframes rule. The at the rate keyframes rule is always preceding the animation name. Okay. Since we are testing it out in Chrome, I've also used the dash webkit dash vendor prefix. Right? that I've encapsulated all my code inside opening and closing curly braces. It's called the at the rate keyframes block. So whatever controls the animation goes inside at the rate keyframes block. Right? So at the rate keyframes is always followed by the name of the animation which you have you've specified out here. And this animation is actually controlled via these few lines. Okay. Now I've divided my animation in two percentages. I would want the changes to happen at 0%, 25%, 50%, 75% and 100% uh, stages of the animation. So basically I've, I've divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 stages. Okay. In the very first stage I'm using the transform property but since uh, I'm using the WebKit browser Chrome I'm again suffixing 
the uh, vendor prefix webkit everywhere people okay now this is the property this is the vendor prefix to make it compatible with the webkit browser Chrome and Safari and this is the value now what does the value translate y do it moves it along the y-axis up and down moves what the image in our example by how much by whatever you specify inside the round brackets initially I've specified 0 px so in the first stage no change but in the second stage uh, first stage leading to the second stage I would want it to shift by 256 px upwards now that is causing the scroll and from the second stage to the third stage this 256 should turn into 512 which then turns into 768 which further turns into minus 1024 so basically uh, one by one all the images are scrolling up over the different five stages of the animation which are controlled uh, with the help of percentages 0, 25, 50, 75, 100 percent alright and the translate y value for the property transform uh, has a value which changes over the different stages over time going from 0 px to minus 256 to minus 512 to minus 768 to 1024 okay and once the animation is through over 8 seconds people it alternates which means then it goes in the opposite direction so what has actually gone up goes down and then back up again and back down again and it never ceases alright so that is all that is there uh, inside the opening and the closing style tags the head of the document closes out here the body starts out here and we have already seen what uh, what is there inside the body of the document alright so it's a very simple and straightforward code people alright so uh, let's take up another browser preview and let's terminate this tutorial let me remind you once again that the source code will be available as a free download from my website http colon forward slash forward slash qualitylessons.net forward slash uh, downloads one that's number one dot html alright people so my name is Mohit Manuja I hope you like this tutorial and also also hope that you'll keep coming back more and more tutorials from me I'll hope that you'll thumb it up you'll comment you'll subscribe and uh, you have a good day bye bye peace